Hello and welcome to today's web seminar, Integrated Appointment Setting and Email Marketing for Trucking Lead Gen. This web seminar is brought to you by Startup Selling and features two expert speakers today. First, Alan Bloom. Alan's the founder and CEO of Startup Selling. He was named to the Inc. 500 list in two consecutive years. He's written two books, Your Virtual Success and Sell More and Work Less. He's the creator of the Prospect Scorecard and has written over 150 in agency marketing articles and is widely considered to be an insurance agency marketing expert. My name is John Scranton. I'm also an agency marketing and lead gen pro, uh, but was previously a licensed agent at a top 100 agency, like many of you. I co-wrote Sell More and Work Less with Alan and have written over 1,000 insurance marketing blogs. So we, before we dive in today, briefly we'll share the discussion topics. First off, we're going to talk about why trucking, just for a few seconds. I know many of you here are already experts in the field and write a lot of trucking business, but some of you are here to learn more about transportation. So we'll talk about why we found it to be such a compelling opportunity. We'll also talk about how to target different size accounts, one to five truck accounts, five to 25, 25 to 50, and then 50 plus. These are very different businesses. One to five, you might have a truck and a trailer or two parked next to a home. 50 plus, you might have a large fleet with a large lot a warehouse, offices, employees supporting the group, etc. So very different entities that require very different marketing strategies. And we'll talk about how we access these prospects using appointment setting, email marketing, or a combination of both. And then after the fact, how the leads generated need to be treated with care and a lead handling process can help your producers do that effectively and make sure that they capitalize on the leads. Some of you that might be here to learn about trucking, but write other lines of business or target other industries like uh, contractors, manufacturers, etc. Uh, the principles we talk about today can also be applied to many blue collar type industries. Some of the metrics are a little different, um, but the ideas and concepts are the same. So even though you hear trucking, note that these principles can be applied to other industries as well. So let's jump in. Why trucking? Well, transportation we found offers a very unique opportunity. Um, when you're talking to these prospects, you'll quickly find out that insurance is very important to them. They're open to discussing it because it's often their third or fourth largest expense. They may have trucks, drivers, fuel, and insurance. Um, so it's a big deal, especially um, to, to these larger accounts who may be paying millions and millions of dollars in premiums. And also, there's quality lists available, much better data than is available in other industries, meaning you can pull lists that have contact information, number of trucks, number of drivers, cargo, number of violations, and most importantly, X dates. And this isn't like going to your state workers comp board website and looking up the X date for one single account where you already have all the other information. You can actually dump hundreds and hundreds of accounts into an Excel spreadsheet where you can then sort and filter based on your criteria to find the accounts in your area that you want to write and even when they renew. So really compelling and unique opportunity um, not available in many other industries. And meanwhile, everything we talk about today, appointment setting, email marketing, or combining the two, all must start with a great list. If you don't have quality data, quality contact information for people to call or people to email, then your results will be poor. The keys are that you have accurate and up-to-date information. There's many list vendors available that will go pull this information from the Department of Transportation for you. Um, you need to determine how often are they updating this information, which is going to determine how accurate it is, and what characteristics or criteria can you use to sort the information so that you don't have to do a massive amount of work um, once you get your Excel-based list? You want to be able to sort by geographic location, not just state, but maybe also zip code or area code or county. You want to sort by number of trucks, what they haul, and you definitely need to be able to sort by when they renew. So make sure all these criteria are available to you and make sure that the end product that's delivered to you is an Excel-based list. Some of these come in PDFs for pennies, 
you can upgrade to an Excel based product um, that will be much more useful for you and your marketing and lead gen team and don't neglect email addresses make sure even if you're just making calls the email addresses are, are available because they will become important in the sales process and if you're doing marketing automation or email marketing you absolutely need email addresses just to begin so how do you target one to five power unit accounts in here you can picture a nice home in the lot next door they have a truck and two trailers and a toolbox so small operation probably home based maybe they have a few trucks in a small lot somewhere the best way to reach these people is by making a phone call an appointment setting initiative we found that leveraging a professional appointment setter someone who does this makes calls to prospects for a living who understands trucking and insurance is the most effective path this is a person who needs to be at least conversational in both insurance and transportation lingo so that they become a professional extension of your organization and who has the disposition to be able to make 20 dials of the phone per hour that's a really big ask think about that how many times have you sat down and made 20 phone calls in a single hour we expect appointment setters on our team to consistently make 20 to 25 dials per hour without using marketing or excuse me uh, auto dialers which we find to be clunky and noisy and unprofessional and these calls targeting accounts of this size should yield about one appointment per hour so this is a very high volume approach maybe on a slower day they get an appointment every hour and 15 minutes or hour and a half but over the long term a good appointment setter with a good pitch and a good list should be producing about an appointment every hour when calling one to five power unit accounts these leads need to go to a producer who has time and who is very detail oriented and diligent in showing up for the appointments making those calls having conversations gathering information and following up and eventually closing a lot of this business by phone so somebody who doesn't mind being at the desk working through a lot of files if you think about this if somebody's scheduling an appointment every hour and you have a average size project let's say of maybe 10 hours of calls per week this producer is going to be receiving 10 new business opportunities every week two a day they have to be able to juggle those 10 new opportunities determine which ones are a good fit which ones they can close follow up on them nail down all the details gather all the information quote and bind and hopefully they can close one of these at least one if they have a very modest close ratio of say 10 percent each and every week and if you're doing that close a one truck account every week as a let's say a a worst case scenario um, people around me producers around me are telling me that 800 to a thousand dollars a truck is a rough idea of what commissions are today um, that would be 800 to a thousand dollars in revenue every week and in the example I gave the appointment setting services shouldn't cost you any more than let's say maybe five hundred dollars a week so you're talking about a very consistent and realistic two to one ROI right off the bat which can grow over time if you can retain some of these accounts and gradually improve your close ratios to hopefully 15 to 20 percent one thing I wanted to mention is many of these small accounts are very price sensitive and this can be a little bit of a challenge for some producers to overcome where they fear that if they sell on price they'll lose on price but many of our clients and agencies we've worked with have found you can win some of this business on price and apply what I call the price service paradigm where you win on price you retain on service these clients will have some needs they will need some certificates they may need some advice they may need some compliance help if you're there to help them then over the course of the first year first couple years where you're very likely to retain um, you can you can win them for the long haul so let's move up the ladder now from one to five to five to 25 power unit accounts we still believe that your fastest path to accessing these prospects is over the phone so we still suggest deploy, deploying an appointment setting lead gen initiative you'll get an appointment 
approximately every two to three hours when calling five to 25 power unit accounts. So instead of eight to 10 a week, now you're talking about three to four leads a week for that 10 hours of calls per week example. However, some of these accounts, especially the 2025 truck guys, are starting to have a little bit more complex risks, complex needs. They're worried about ELDs. They're trying to figure out cameras. Um, they have more compliance needs, uh, maybe some comp exposures, et cetera. So we like to find a second way to touch these prospects for our clients and suggest that, that you consider that in your marketing and lead gen initiatives as well. And the easiest way, the most effective way to do that is via an email drip campaign where you're touching these prospects one to twice per, once or twice per month with educational content talking about the same subjects that I just rattled off. Maybe it's ELD timelines, maybe it's DOT compliance, uh, maybe it's uh, fuel theft, maybe it's recruitment or retention. None of those have anything to do with selling insurance, by the way. And you're conveying value over time and building name recognition so that when the phone call is made, they're much more likely to put two and two together, know who you are, and be open to a conversation. So by doubling down, emailing, and calling these people, as you get into the larger 20 to 25 power unit accounts, you enhance your chances and enhance your results. This is more of a, a moderate volume approach where instead of the eight to 10, like I mentioned before, you're talking to three to four people per week. However, that still could be 12 to 15 per month. And if you're closing a couple of them using the same scenarios we used before, should be compelling ROI and should be compelling close ratio numbers. Another step up the ladder, the 25 to 50 power unit accounts. Here, phone calls can still work, but we really want to have a strong one-two punch. Phone calls to this type of account, um, this type of accounts are typically going to provide an appointment about once every four to five hours. And we can really enhance our chances of opening a dialogue if we have a strong email marketing campaign that precedes and even follows up on the, on the appointment setting phone calls that we're making. So to do that, we wanna have very strong collateral. When you get to a 50 truck account, in the beginning I gave the example of the big lot, 50 trucks, 100 dry vans, the uh, nice offices, they have a large staff supporting the drivers, maybe they even have their own pumps. Um, you have a very complex risk here, so you need to elevate your game when speaking to these people. And remember that all the big ag agencies are going after accounts of this size as well. So a great way to elevate your game is to become a thought leader by bringing web seminars to your prospects. Don't just email them with a short blurb, email them with an invitation to a web seminar that features an expert, expert guest speaker, a consultant who has deep expertise in DOT compliance, or a company that provides ELDs, or cameras, or an attorney, and they can present educational information that shows the type of value that your agency can convey. So as you move up the ladder from one to five, to five to 25, to 25 to 50, each of these accounts, each of these steps become more complex, as does your marketing. This will be a lower volume approach, but as you obviously know, with a 50 truck account comes a very large commission. So last but not least, we'll talk about the lowest volume approach where you're going after the biggest fish in the pond, the 50 plus marketplace. Here, still do your e-marketing and web seminars, still make follow-up calls, but focus them on things like the clicks and opens that result from your email campaign or the registrants and attendees from your web seminar campaign. But here, as you move into the biggest of the big trucking accounts, you want to use the most complex email marketing available, and you want to leverage email marketing automation. And Alan is going to talk about email marketing automation and how it can help you access these prospects most effectively. So we're starting to get into the very serious commissions here. Uh, we are 100 power units with all the associated uh, infrastructure that goes along with that. It could be a $100,000 commission account that you're going after. 
These are completely different, of course, than the one to five power unit accounts where literally from, from a simple but consistent and professional campaign, you can be getting two appointments a day. Completely different animal. Uh, I, ironically, when you add up the total pipeline, um, they could be quite comparable because you only may be getting four or five appointments with these a month, uh, one a week, perhaps. Of course, when they're landing with a $100,000 thud into your pipeline, that's a lot of opportunities. $100,000 a week is uh, comes out to a you know, multi-million dollar pipeline at the end of the year. Now, it's low volume, but a very high level, a very strategic level of contact. One of the things that offers that, that very few agencies do, even the agencies targeting these tremendously large accounts, is workflow, email campaign workflow. And let's take a look at what that might, uh, an, an image of that might look like. So, so when we were talking about 25 power units, for example, or even up to 50 power units, a traditional marketing campaign where you say, come to my webinar this month and we'll talk to you about improving compliance or improving your CSA scores or changing regulations in the industry. Well, that that's very good and, and I think it, it will absolutely attract their attention if you do it consistently. And then of course you follow those up with appointment setting calls. Now in the big leagues, we have to, to show people that we offer more. We are true thought leaders when it comes to the transportation industry. We know it better than anyone. We have the best collateral materials. We have, we have our finger on the pulse of changes with the industry. We have expert speakers that we bring in for our half hour webinars or our one hour webinars. We have um, content available for you that is premier uh, in the entire industry. And that's why when it comes to trusting us with your 100 or 200 power unit account, with the people to talk to. Something that does that very, very well is called email marketing workflow. And here is a picture of one of those workflows. Yes, this is just one workflow with all the branching that's involved with that. And we have a little blow up that says yes or no, which we'll talk about in a second, add to list as a workflow click or send an email to schedule a meeting. So. All of the, this logic is built into the campaigns in advance, is modified as you go along. So an email comes to me, my name is Alan Smith, I uh, have a Smith Trucking, I have 125 power units, and you're talking about changes to CSA regulations, and I'm not interested. Now I move someplace else in the workflow. Whereas you reach out to John Scranton, Scranton Trucking, he has 150 power units and he is interested in that. We will then branch to different actions off of that and continue to branch off of that. And John then would like to go to a webinar on CSA regulations. And John would like a PDF that you have on CSA regulations. And he would like a meeting to, to, to review his CSA scores and, and planning on how he can improve safety and compliance and so on or training for his truckers. Whereas I get an email and the, the third email I receive is about ELDs. And I'm, I'm interested in that because I'm, I'm in the process of, of trying to improve on the current technology I'm using in my trucks. And I have both owner operators and employees. And so I click on that and now I go down my separate branch. So you can handle each and every large trucking prospect differently based upon the type of information they desire. And that is called dynamic content. And it's very sophisticated and it will make you look unique in the industry. So that's something to aspire to. Of course, if you aren't doing any email at all, the first thing you have to do is go back to the basics, which John talked about. You have to get your list, which fortunately in trucking is very doable. You have to segment your market in the regions, states, or perhaps nationally. Uh, who you're targeting. You have to determine the types of ponds you're going to fish in. Is it going to be one to five, one to 25, one to 50, 50 to 100, 100 plus? All of them. Of course, that would be handled differently. And then ha get your content together so that you can bring that quality content to those people. Now, it's not to say that a 100 power unit account will not be price sensitive. John did have a, a real pithy phrase where he said, you know, he has a, a price service paradigm. 
Uh, but ultimately, when you get high uh, uh, in the pipeline and you're talking about high level accounts there, it is your service and your knowledge that will differentiate you for these very large accounts. Nothing does that better than email marketing workflow. Let's continue, John. So we talked about the branching, we talked about the, the unique experience, we talked about the multiple workflows, we're only looking at one, and you can see there's an investment that would have to be made to do a great job with this. Traditional email marketing is much simpler. You do a couple of campaigns a month, perhaps you invite people to a webinar, to look at case studies, to see a white paper, to learn about uh, CSA changes and so on. Here, far more content, an order of magnitude more that you're gonna offer. Let's continue. So what kind of content? Well, here's just a few examples, and, and perhaps you've seen these and perhaps you haven't. Um, an infographic, starting on the right-hand side, people tend to like these. They're very sticky, they're very interested. We use them at Startup Selling, and we use them for clients as well. People love this. It could be you know, the largest 10 uh, trucking accidents in history, and, and, the, and, and in that you can have all those interesting metrics what the cargo was, uh, what the disposition was, what the penalty was, what the fine was, yet you're not selling insurance, but you're sure providing interesting and compelling information and reasons why. Uh, for those of you who are selling cyber insurance, terrific blog topics today. What uh, uh, trucking as well as other organizations are all impacted by cyber threats today. What are they doing? Are they insured? What are the 10 most common cyber threats trucking companies or other companies are facing today? Terrific blog material. Or that's so substantial you could turn it actually into an article and offer it that way. Uh, case studies, five accounts, or actually yeah, five accounts in five different regions of the country and how they improved their safety scores and dropped their relative insurance rates by an average of $100 a truck, $1,000 a truck, $800 a driver, and so on. But, but it is not a sales job, it is an educationally oriented case study or white paper, very powerful. So when you take all of these and you add, for example, a full motion graphic video on the five best ways to, to uh, uh, educate your drivers and lower your insurance costs, for example, you have lots of things that you're beginning to offer, and that could either be offered through tr traditional email marketing, or it could be offered through marketing workflow. So think about it. All this great stuff you're producing, more and different things to talk about, different ways to appeal to different buyers. Millennials might like one thing, and your trucking uh, business owners who are 50 or 60 years old might like something else. So the idea is you're bringing lots of different types of information and giving people an opportunity to interact with you digitally in a way that they like best. With all of this, you're still following up this with phone calls. So it's not just one method of reaching out, Multiple methods of reaching out, especially if they're integrated, work best. Let's continue. So when it comes down to it, regardless of whether what John started with or what I'm ending with, it is a classic funnel building, segmented target marketing and, and email list building process. And we start with a large group of suspects in the top of the funnel, which a lot of trucking agencies fail at, because that you want to be adding to that every month. Every month, you, the, the trucking um, register you know, comes out, the, the Department of Transportation publishes new information. You want those going into the top of your funnel every month. Those are your suspects. You start reaching out to them by phone, by email, by workflow. And some of those suspects become prospects. Perhaps they clicked on an email campaign. They expressed some interest on the phone. They agreed to a, a, a telephone call. They agreed to an on-site meeting. You take your extra 20 prospects a month, for example, and you take, uh, of those eight of them, turn into, uh, uh, you take your 20 suspects, eight turn into prospects, and you close two 
or three of them after qualifying them and presenting to them. It is a classic funnel process. For, so for you, the takeaways, how do I build the perfect list? How do I verticalize and target the segments I'm going after? What is the information that I want to get to those people? And how can I show, demonstrate my thought leadership or my professionalism to these people? Think about those things. If you don't have them in place today, you know, there's no reason you can't start on those today. John? Lead handling, one of our favorite topics. We have clients who've stayed with us for years and have been amazingly successful with something as simple as a, call, a cold calling campaign. Uh, the metrics John had given you are classic campaigns. So if you say to me, if I have client A and they're getting 20 leads a month and they're cl closing their fair share and they're growing every year, and I have client B who tries it for three months and says it's not for me, what's the difference? It often comes down to their internal lead handling process. And we help clients with this, but ultimately it's your responsibility. Your producers have to follow up on the leads, on the activity. So we help you create a lead handling process. We give you a sample process. We help you document that process. You should formalize that process. You must make your producers accountable, which means you're measuring that and you're always trying to refine that engagement from the initial interaction, which might be a phone call, through the proposal, through the quote, so that you improve your close ratio. So it's a process, you can get there. Well, thank you very much, Alan, and we thank all of you for attending today. If you have any additional questions or if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, or if you'd like a complimentary trucking lead gen review, a quick, consultation of what you're doing, uh, what refinements we think you may be able to make, please reach out to us. My phone number and email address are on the screen. With that, today's web seminar is now ending. We hope you all have a great day.